once in a while, you get a build that you just have to run through the ringer. When a $9,000 build comes across your work desk, build desk, workbench, I don't know. Point is, you gotta know how this thing is gonna run. Well, it's a good thing we did that with this build, and let's find out why right here on Robitech. When Psycho, and yes, that's her Discord name, came to me and initially asked about doing this commission, it started out kinda normal. She had a case she liked, it felt pretty good, but something in her said, bigger. And so the build grew, and it grew into a $9,000 Threadripper monster that we are showing today. Unfortunately, this monster had an ugly side, and it came down to the Corsair Crystal 680X and just how not good for thermals this case really is. But more on that later, first, we build. Let's start talking about parts because that's what everybody really wants to know about. This is the core of the whole thing uh, and this is the Ryzen 3970X Threadripper, absolutely behemoth of a CPU. Um, we're using the RG Strix TRX40 XE Gaming. Uh, we're throwing in 128 gigs of 3200 megahertz, that's right, better for Threadripper, 3200 megahertz Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM. Be Quiet has this amazing Dark Rock Puro TR4. This is a massive AIO cooler, specifically built for Threadripper. There is a non-TR4 R4 version of this, um, but this is the one we're gonna be using to cool this CPU. For our GPU, uh, we're gonna be using the Asus RG Strix RTX 3090, we're using the EVGA 1000 watt, uh, the uh, 1000 G5, uh, should be more than enough power for uh, what we're gonna be basically doing for this. We're gonna be using the Corsair QL120s. And then finally, the last part is we have two uh, Western Digital Black SN850, so two terabyte, two two terabyte uh, Western Digital SN850 NVMe SSDs. That's all of our parts, minus obviously our case. So we'll talk about our case real quick, because that's always fun. Um, so this is the Corsair Crystal 680X. Let's strip it down. We'll talk a little bit about how we're gonna be doing airflow, but first we're gonna kind of strip it down. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna do airflow in this case. We're gonna educate you guys. I got a little pointer. I'm like a teacher. Whoa, it's a magnetic one, so it's like you can get you're like, oh, oh, my eye, oh, my eye. Oh, you could have, uh, just kidding, no, my eye's fine. It's just, it's all good. Um, so anyway, uh, we're gonna have two QL120s. The fact those are specifically to provide cold air to the RTX 3090. We're gonna have a QL140 and a QL140. So we should be exhausting quite a bit of air out of that. So two exhaust, a uh, total of five intake. And the big thing we wanna make sure is just that we're feeding uh, both that air cooler and the um, 3090 with nice cold air. So I'm gonna put this back over on the side and let's uh, keep going here. Okay, so let's open up our Threadripper. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little, uh, your, your little torque wrench, you're gonna start with three, and you're gonna loosen this bad boy up. Same thing with this one too. And finally with one. And then this will pop up just like that. And then there's these little two blue, little two blue attachments. You're gonna take this, lift up. You're just gonna pull this little bit out. And so there you go, that pops out like that. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thread ripper. And there's a little track along the side. And you're just gonna slide it in, making sure that you hit this along the tracks in the side of the case. And then you're gonna remove this. And then now you're going to set this down like that. And then you're gonna close this down like this. Now what you do is just start one, and then go to two, and then go to three. And then once you've got them all started, then you'll finish torquing them down. So there you go, you've got them all started. Then you're gonna go until, what'll happen is you'll get to a point, and you'll feel it. The wrench will stop, and then you'll see that little click. That's how you know it's all the way done. Now you're gonna do that with the other two. There you go, and then finally the third. And there you go. Now our CPU is installed and you guys have now seen how to install a Threadripper. It's time to take all this RAM and put it in this slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen all these going on here. 128 gigs, so many dims. Four terabytes of Gen 4, PCIe Gen 4 
NVMe SSDs. 3970X, four terabytes of storage, 128 gigs of RAM, and a partridge in a pear tree. We have everything. Now we just gotta put in our cooler. Uh-oh. That is not gonna clear. We just got the cooler in today, and I, was, I didn't check the RAM clearance. Dang it. We need low profile RAM to do that. So we're gonna have to switch coolers, which luckily I, we're just gonna have to switch to an AIO, which is okay. We're gonna be switching to a Z7, Z63, 280 millimeter AIO. We'll be top mounting the AIO, the top, obviously. And then we need our bracket for our cooler. There are two, there's, a, there's two cables that you have to plug in. I need to make sure will work with this particular build or I'm going to have to do something else. So we're putting some compression on the RAM on the right side. That was one thing I wanted to check with this particular motherboard. We're going to switch to G-Skill. Got that squared. Now let's go back and get our actual cooler that we were gonna do before, because it fits now. Okay, next up, what we're gonna do is we're going to prep our case. This is our build as it sits now. We haven't put any cables in it or anything like that, but you can actually see where things sit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually go ahead and hook up all our front panels. So I'm gonna route the front panels. We hooked up our USB-C, our front panel connections, USB 3.2, uh, USB and HD audio. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now, because I can, is I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the GPU. Okay, grab our three cables. Okay, let's get our hooked up, our stuff hooked up on the other side. Okay, let's get our PSU out. Thousand watts. Let's get this puppy on. This has been a journey, guys. A journey to say the least. Three, two, one. Not, not too bad. No, no, that's not bad. Oh, it makes me, oh. Okay, and there you go. Plenty of room for cable management. For the most part though, everything is clean and together. And let's get our stuff back on it and let's see if this thing turns on. Boom, boom. There it is. <laughs> Well, you're probably looking at that amazing B-roll and then seeing what we put into it and then noticing, hmm, what is happening? Well, remember when I talked about that ugly monster? Yeah, it's called Bad Airflow Case plus Air Cooled Threadripper does not a match made in heaven make. 
When we first started talking about thermals on this build, we were using the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro TR4 for Threadripper. It's a beast of an air cooler and more than capable of cooling this chip in the right circumstances, which is not the Crystal 680X. We had done previous Threadripper builds before, like our $10,000 build that you can check out right here, which was more of a flex build, by the way. But given Psycho was going to be doing rendering and actually using the CPU for what God or AMD intended it to be used for, we needed to ensure it was actually properly cooled. So covering the entire IHS was critical here. Remember, that chip is huge, and it limited the options of some great air coolers and a number of okay options on the AIO side. Anyway, fast forward to our testing and we found out the Crystal 680X just cannot get the air needed given that she still wanted to have RGB and all that sort of stuff to really use the Dark Rock Pro TR4 effectively without maybe replacing all of those awesome QL120s with Noctua NFF12s and like blacking it out or maybe even doing the A12s and making it all brown and pukey and ugh, nobody wants that. In fact, twice during our testing, we saw the PSU shut off due to just thermal constraints. So we decided we'd better AIO cool this thing with the biggest AIO we could put inside the case. And that meant we were using the 280 millimeter Intermax TR4. Okay, hold on. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Now you might be saying first, Roby, this case could handle a 360. And yes, you would be right if you weren't using an Asus Strix ROG RTX 3090, of course. So a 280 millimeter it is. Now I know Intermax AIOs have had issues and it's definitely something we need to keep an eye on, mainly potential for gunking. But I have run one in my old Threadripper system for three years with zero issues. And if we do see a drop in cooling, we will know we need to replace it. Phew, well, finally, oh wait, never mind. That's right, the motherboard died too. Okay, so now we've brought you to where we are in this juncture. Given all of that drama, and it was a lot of drama, how does it actually run? First off, this was a PC built in the Corsair Crystal 680X in a slightly positive pressure configuration, running a mixture of Corsair QL120 and QL140 fans. Now, if you wanna get more details on the barrage of tests and what we do to get these numbers, you can check out our testing methodology video right here. You'll learn something, by the way. So for thermals in our Threadripper 3970X, there was nothing really crazy here when we talked about idle. We were sitting at 43 degrees in our open case scenario and jumped only a few degrees to 45 when we put all the coverings back on. Now, when we put the CPU through the ringer and really spread the rings in this workhorse, it's when we see things get to a nice and toasty 86 degrees in the open case scenario and a blistering 95 degrees in the closed case scenario. Now, given this is the worst case scenario, out of 64, pegging the CPU at 100% for half an hour the entire time, I don't expect her to see temps this bad. And frankly, the higher average here is due to spikes more than the CPU staying consistently in 95 the whole time. We also saw zero thermal throttling, which means the AO and the fans were doing an adequate job of cooling the CPU given the case. I mean, it is blocked with tempered glass up there and that is gonna have an overall effect. For the GPU, it's a very different story. One where we had enough cooling for the RTX 3090 that it wasn't really anything to write home about. Under idle conditions, we were sitting at a nice and frosty 28 degrees with only a plus one degree difference at 29 in the close case scenario. We put the GPU to the test with our myriad of benchmarks. We saw some pretty cool temps macking out at 69 degrees in open case scenario. And again, only a single degree difference at 70 in the close case. So that's it, that's thermals, but what about gameplay? Well, let's talk about single player experiences. Using ray tracing or RTX, given this is an NVIDIA GPU paired with a Ryzen Threadripper 3970X, not a gaming CPU, and an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090, or pretty much any 3090 for that matter within reason. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS on and highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 122 FPS across the games and the titles that we ran. For Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p, running with ray tracing on high and DLSS set to balanced, we saw an average FPS of about 50.70. Yeah, that's 50. Again, lower than what you might see on any 5000 series Ryzen or 10th and 11th gen Intel, given this isn't a gaming CPU. Well, what about MP games? I mean, that's probably a little bit better. And yes, you're right. For Apex Legends, running on low visual settings at 1440p, again, optimized for gameplay and high FPS, we saw an average frame rate of 139.2 FPS across our multiple game sessions. Call of Duty, same thing, 
competitively set, we were sitting at 131 FPS. And finally, for all you Fortnite fans, we also set with low visual settings, again, trying to basically make sure that we were set for competitive, we were sitting at a nice and fluid 273 FPS. Again, these numbers are almost half of what you would see on a normal Gaby CPU, and something to take note of if you're looking to do a PC in this configuration, especially if you want to do a gaming PC. If you're like an eSport pro wanting to build an ultra competitive gaming PC with your elite monies, you may not want to flex with a Threadripper build. This isn't the right build for you. So that's it. That's the full story of this $9,000 Crystal Threadripper build, a workhorse PC that is capable of gaming, and finally, with all of our individual tweaking and everything like, finally cool enough to be able to do both, which is good, because that's important, that's what she needs to do. So, curious, were you surprised with these numbers? Were you eyeing this case and now thinking differently? Mm-hmm. Would love to know all of those thoughts down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we have a video go live right here on YouTube. Now, speaking of live, did you know we actually have a live show? That's right, it's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 5.30 p.m. We do live builds, we have great conversations. It is a meaningful moment in your life and you're missing it. Also, you should check out our amazing community over at discord.gg slash robytech. Guys, it is absolutely awesome. We have over 13,000 people there. We talk about builds, we talk about dad jokes, we do memes, we hug virtually via forums. It's great. Also, check out all of our socials. We got the Instagram, we got the TikTok, we got the Twitter, we got all of them, and it's all at robytech. Anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed this little review of the $9,000 build, and we hope to see you on the next one.